Henrietta City Council regular meeting Tuesday, July 21st, 2015, 6.30 p.m. Civic Center, 115 South 4th Street. Invocation, please, Bill. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we ask that you give us the wisdom and the courage to make the decisions that are in the best interest of our city and its citizens. Further ask that you watch over all public safety personnel and members of the military, wherever they may be. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number one has no action. Roll call. Oh, do you want to do that? <laughs> Why? Roll call, Donna. Goodner. Here. Jeff Goat. Here. Scott. Here. Kelzer. Here. Lisa. Here. Item number one. No action. Bill has decided he will continue on the city council at this moment. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Item number two, discuss and act on approval of consent agenda. A, financial reports for June 2015. B, minutes of meetings held in June 2015. C, claims for the month of June 2015. D, budget amendments number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 for the fiscal year 2014-2015. Make a motion to approve. I second that. Roll call, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number three, discuss and act on approval of payments to AEP PSO in the amount of $22,211.53. Make a motion to approve that payment. Second. Roll call, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number four, discuss and act on approval of payments to Fuelman in the amount of $9,778.07. Make a motion to approve. I second it. You know, it might be good to explain what Fuelman is for the people of those that are listening, because they may not know what that is. Uh, those are the fuel cards that are given for each vehicle and for the tractor, so we buy um, gasoline and diesel. So that's basically fuel cost for the right, and it's a weekly purchase, so that four times is how that comes out. It comes out weekly. Okay, thanks. Uh, a further comment on that: uh, uh, the different items we have on here for uh, that we're approving tonight. It gives. I think it's a good idea we have them on here. It gives the citizens a, a good idea of the, the daily costs of running the city. So when we see. A utility bills, various things like that. This is where the money's going. These kind of things. What was your question? The miles. I was just looking at who seconded the, the dollar versus the total miles. We spent twenty four hundred to go thirty nine hundred miles. That's what that means. Well, I don't think it's a, you know it's accurate on how it's entered, and then the trackers and the diesel and then gas that's bought for lawnmowers is also free. Oh yeah. So, yeah, it, no so we get like if we do a ten gallon can of gasoline for the lawnmowers, then there's. Is there any way to break that down further, where we would know what was used for? The old man can't break that down. Yeah. It'll, it'll be by the car, I guess. It's a packet the same size as this. It's by the car, right? It's the right. It'll break it down by the car and by the user. So. And, and even then, it doesn't. He gives you gallons and a cost, right? I guess. Yeah. Who has no department? Like, huh? No department. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that. A no department. That is um, city manager and uh, Derek, and then there's like. Um, so the mechanic. Yeah, the mechanic. And the city manager. And the city manager. <clears throat> that report it does break down by odometer. It doesn't mileage yeah, it, so it's some of them kind of track. fill them in and then like the tractors are not. So. Yeah, I've seen those at yeah. one time where it was broken down. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. 
$12,058.79 for loan payments, ladder truck, GMP fire truck, backhoe, and six wheel dump truck. I make a motion to approve that payment. I second it. Roll call, please. Goodner? Yes. Jeff Coe? Yes. Scott? Yes. Kelzer? Yes. Clayson? Yes. <coughs> Item number seven. Discuss an act on approval of purchase of 2,000 gallons of aviation fuel in the amount of $8,060 for Henrietta Airport. I make a motion that we approve that payment. I second that motion. Roll call, please. Goodner? Yes. Jeff Cub? Yes. Scott? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Clayson? Yes. Item number eight. Discuss an act on approval of payment of invoice number 466877 in the amount of $19,266.24 to the Hall Estel for professional services rendered. Make a motion to approve. I second it. Roll call, please. Good here. Yes. Jeff Cope? Yes. Scott? Yes. Kelzer? Yes. Clayson? Yes. Item number nine. Discuss an act on approval of payment to Crossroads Communication, LLC, in the amount of $4,000 to be reimbursed by HEDA. I make a motion to approve that. Second that. Mr. Mayor and Council, it's in here mainly for, um, this is the Oklahoma Opportunities booth for the International Conference of Shopping Centers. It's in November. Um, Gary Clayson and I attended last year. This is participation in a booth with 15 other cities, and it gives you a 30 by 30 space and a booth to promote the city and our development of our retail future. But um, Crossroads is who does the booth, the artwork, and develops the booth and puts it together. Does this include our handout that we're going to hand out? Just no, we'll have to put that together. Okay. How much? How much money are you looking at? at something like that cost us. Uh, we're going to hand out whether it be a thumb drive or. The thumb bracket. Um, we'll do something on an eight and a half by eleven sheet to just put in the booth so people can carry with them. And then if we wanted to do a professional thumb drive, we'd have to talk about that. Where's this? At? Where's it going to be? It'll be in Dallas, Texas, at the convention center. Roll call, please. Good there. Yes. Jeff Cove. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number 10, discuss and act on approval of payment of invoice number 9042 to Crawford & Associates PC in the amount of $16,151.46 for the professional services rendered.
train? Or It'll be a training process and getting them introduced to the software, getting them introduced <coughs> to the methods of what we have here, and then sending them to an ENCODE school or doing some online training in addition to that. Plus having Crawford's introduce them to the accounting levels of what they do. And the AP side also for paying the benefits side. I think if we do it, if it takes a year to do all that, I think it would be a wise investment. <coughs> Have given any thought to uh, in-house training, bringing somebody <coughs> that we already have that is familiar with our operations. I would think somebody like that, we could bring them up to speed in some reasonable period of time. I can't believe that running a payroll system for 60-some employees is going to require somebody that we have to pay $50,000 a year. That makes no sense to me. There's got to be other municipalities that are using this software that are in similar pay configurations that we are, and they got to be doing something right. We need to talk to those folks and see what we can find out. You have talked to Tyler, Texas, multiple times, haven't you? But it's been a, yeah, they'll, this, and this they'll is, train. They'll train. I mean, I mean, they've got, they've got in-house training down there. They send people up, out to train. I mean, really, if they weren't trained, would probably be our best bet, because then they don't know anything, and yeah. then they learn it all how it's supposed to be taught. We approach that. But this, uh, but, yeah, yeah, as far as this software goes, but there's, I think, I think if someone comes in that's never worked in a municipality type environment, there's a fairly steep learning curve just learning the accounting system because, because this is, this is Great. kind of a, uh, trust me, this is, this ain't, this ain't your normal everyday off the shelf accounting right. business, I'm sure. Right. Well, I think some of that money could be spent. Uh, if we only have four people working on the streets and stuff, you know, that's, that cruise is not big enough. Streets and signs and the, right. the well, we're short in the, the water office. They had two people in there today, three yesterday. They are working themselves to death in there trying to meet schedules and things, and it, it's showing on them. They're really, we, we got to get a position filled for some help in there, I think. And, and we can bring up the payroll clerk in. And, can, and paying clerk is what is thousand dollars six days hiring a wife in the city, okay? Well, it's, uh, what is it, five, six days of a pay period, would you think, max? To, to manage 60, 65 pay, uh, well, we paychecks? Well, we have 85 and it's seven days a month. And so they would have time left over. They could help in the water office and, and it would be a win-win all around. Anyway, Ted's moving on it and let's see next month where we're at. Roll call, please. Gainer. Yes. Jetco. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kowser. Yes. Tyson. Yes. Item number 11, discuss and act on approval of payment to emergency medical services in the amount of $7,561.85. Make a motion to approve it. Second. I, I got a question. What is this for exactly? I can't find anything in here. There's not anything in here. That's what we collect. We collect the 350 on the water bill each month, and it's a pass through, pass -through that oh, we pay. Oh, 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 okay, okay, I got you, I got you. Okay, so, so this is the money that we collect in the water bill that goes yes. to the EMS people, right? Yes. I got you. For the ambulance right. services. I got you. Okay, right. thank you. That shows my ignorance here. No. <laughs> no. Roll call, please. Good here. Yes. Jeff Coates. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number 12. Discuss and act on approval of payment to Henrietta Economical Development Authority in the amount of $8,558.82. Same thing, it's just a crossover. Yes. I made a motion, we approve that. I second that. Roll call, please. Gunner? Yes. Jeff Coe? Yes. Scott? Yes. Kelsey? Yes. Clayson? Yes. Item number 13. Discuss act to appoint Jill Francis to the Henrietta Economical Development Authority to fill the unexpired term of trustee Steve Pearson, whose term will expire June 30th, 2017. I make a motion we approve Miss Francis for that position. I'll second that. Roll call, please. Good there. Yes. Jeff Cook? Yes. Scott? Yes. Calder? Yes. Hi. Yes. Welcome aboard, Jill. Thank you. Item number 14, discuss and act on approval of the inter, I can't say that word, so inter agency. Yeah, it's not coming out right. <laughs> Communications and programming agreement between the City of Henrietta, City of Altmulgee, and County of Altmulgee pertaining to the use and programming of communication equipment for first responders. 
Make a motion we approve. I second it, but can somebody explain it? Yeah. Exactly. That's true. Chief of Police, Steve Norman Kennedy. It's a 10 year agreement between Alton Mulgee and the city for the communications radio towers and programming. And what, what it is is that about? we agree. Is this what you talked to us about? No, no. One time. This is this is an agreement um, between these three agencies that uh, we will not give out each other's color codes and pass codes for our radio system. And that's really all it says. Yeah. Okay. And it's agreement saying that uh, if we want to have a third party program our radios, because <coughs> it's not the programming of the 1990s. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I mean, it's a it is an in depth program. Um, and you can do a lot of damage to the radio system if you have the passcodes and the color codes to get into it. And it's just saying that we will not share those with anyone other than amongst ourselves. If there's a third party that comes in, that uh, like Muskogee Communications, who typically does our programming, um, we have to have their approval to allow it. Okay. And that's, that's basically it. And this was drawn up. Um, by the county and the city of Owami. And we should, um, once, once I figured out that they had drawn it up and weren't getting into this agreement, I thought that we should probably get into the agreement with that. That's fine. Yes, I got it. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Cabot. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayton. Yes. Item number 15 discuss and act on approval of the commercial lease usage agreement between the City of Henrietta Landlord and Project Heart, H-E-A-R-T, Incorporated Tenant. Make a motion to approve it. Second. Roll call, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Cabot. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelsey. Yes. Tyson. Yes. Item number 16, discuss act to purchase a set of Jaws of Life equipment for the Powerhawk Technologies Incorporated in the amount of $25,781.75 for the Henrietta Fire Department. I want to speak, David? Wait. Motion we approve. Yeah. I second, second that. Well, we got two seconds. Yeah. We got a double second. Double second. You guys, you see the cost of it. I know you guys approved $25,000. The cost was low, over seven hundred eighty-one dollars. The reason why it's that high is the actual cost of the tools was twenty-four thousand six hundred dollars. But the, we're ordering the same kind of tools we have. So that way, our tools will interchange with each other. But our tools are still about ten years old, and the newest ones we've got, and they've updated their their couplings and connections. And what the eleven hundred dollars for that's added to that is makes our couplings match up. Mm -hmm. So if one of our pumps pumps go out, we can still use tools from either truck on it. That's the reason why, and I apologize for not having that in, but that's something new they come up with. So, and uh, I believe on our outside fire funds, I have enough to cover that. Uh, well, I know we do. So, you got a budget 25, and we can take the others out of our outside fire if that works with you guys. Okay, perfect. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think the city can cough up an extra seven. <laughs> He's got it. He just. He's got it. You're being awful free with taxpayer money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Roll call, please. Skinner. Yes. Jeff Cook. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number 17, discuss act to purchase body cameras from VBU in the amount of $10,363.40 for the Henrietta Police Department. I'll make a motion we approve those body camera purchases. I'll second that. Steve. Uh, if the council has any questions about those, it's basically um, the same design as we have now, but they are far more technologically advanced than the first generation that we have. The average service life for those, as I figure, are about two years. Um, with this quote, we get two-year warranty um, included. So if there's any issues with it during that two years, they'll fix it for free. And this is one for every officer we have. On Correct. The yes. And they're giving us a pretty good trade-in. Uh, um, on the ones we have now that you had quoted are, higher, well, five. yes uh, after a little haggling we uh, we got it down a little bit lower we were one of the first agencies that jumped on board with VU and um, they've rewarded us with being that so okay. All right, thank you roll 
call, please? Gunner? Yes. Jeff Yes. Scott? Yes. Kelzer? Yes. Clayson? Yes. Item number 19. Hey, just. I don't know. I'll skip it. Oh, that's why you're still there. <laughs> Discuss an act to purchase Tasers X. 26P and related equipment from Taser International in the amount of $13,520.60 for the Henrietta Police Department. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Steve? The new Taser, let me back up. Taser X26 is no longer being manufactured. That is what we carry. Um, they're a second or third generation Taser, which is the update now. They just, longer batteries. The run of the mill technology upgrades. Um, but the biggest thing for us is they're not making the model we have now and they're not servicing the X26. The X26P has completely taken its place. Um, the estimate was more than the 12,000 that I had uh, asked for, uh, but I've got B view down under uh, enough that they offset each other. So, in, in the end, it costs about, it costs the same amount of money that um, in the budget we asked for. So. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Roll call, please. Goodness. Yes. Jeff Cook. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelser. Yes. Tyson. Yes. Item number 19, again. Discuss and act on purchase of paint for angle parking and have it completed with volunteers and or city employees. Make a motion we approve the purchase of that paint and solicit help from wherever possible. <laughs> Second, Second that. I know the reintegration program had volunteers do this a while back. I don't know if they're still on board with that. I can ask. Well, I, I, I would explore that because I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with you guys. If you guys are willing to come and do it, you know, we furnish the paint, let them come and do it. You know, so because because you know, I, I absolutely now I, I have a reason to park over there where they don't angle park. My wife goes to the physical therapy center over there on the corner now, and so we ended up we ended up having to find a place to park and walk because they're in you know for some reason somebody took up on themselves to Angle Park just north of physical therapy. Oh, you know they did yeah uh, about half of that block Angle Parks on on the east on the west side and about half of a dozen so there's there's like six cars on one end and three cars on the other. Okay. So now hey, it's legal for an angle park. We just don't have any lines to take. Yeah, no line <laughs> but, but somehow or other, they kind of took it upon themselves. They just took the initiative. And they just well, we passed it, it so they could do it. Get Jennifer some paint, she'll do it. That's a deal. All right, roll call, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Cook. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number 20. Discuss an act on approval of ordinance number 1044, an ordinance of the city of Henrietta amending part 11, parks, recreation, and cultural affairs, chapter one, parks, recreation, and hunting, section 11-101 of the code of the ordinances of the city of Henrietta, Oklahoma, naming the board, the Henrietta Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Board, amending the number of members, Amending the qualification of members and defining a quorum and declaring an emergency. Make a motion we approve this. <clears throat> Second. If I can explain the reason, I, I'm, I'm the instigator of this. We, we uh, the parks board, you know, our, the, the city planning group that I've been meeting with ever since, well, uh, for over a year now, you know, we we have basically come to the realization that, that, that the real jewels that we have in our community are, are, are the parks areas. Those are the things that we have that are, that are not exploited to the means uh, that they should be, and, and we're, we're working toward that, you know, with the ATV business out there, with the, with the swimming area here, with the splash pad going at McCutcheon Park. But what we don't have is, we do not have a, a, a board, an advisory board, uh, that one has, has the authority and two, I think, it does not have the people uh, to to do this. We have uh, allocated a good bit of money to tourism uh, through the hotel motel tax annually. Uh, you know, we're getting like seventy thousand bucks a year in there through that, and that's and, and that's not a little bit of money. But it's that it ain't a lot of money, but it's but it's a decent amount of money. And I and uh, I I met the other night with the parks board for the first time uh, since the, since the new members came on. They elected their new director and their new secretary and all that and. Uh, and they, and they have decided to do a monthly meeting instead of a 
whatever, whenever they needed, when they thought they needed a meeting, okay? Uh, and they understand that they're an advisory board and, they, and, and what they need. And we need to have one member of that board who is, who is actually a member of the tourism industry, somebody in the hotel, motel business. And, and, and basically, we still appoint them, but they're the one that picks that individual. You know, it may be Zach Patel, it may be one of his kids or whatever, you know, it, or it could be somebody else, okay? I can't imagine that Patel's not being involved in it because of their involvement in the hotel motel business in town. Uh, but this, this is important, and, and uh, that board needs to be involved in tourism. And one thing our city lacks also is it does not, it does not have an organization within the city besides the Chamber of Commerce who actually is an organization that's probably not going away anytime in the foreseeable future, but there's a lot of activities that go on that if, if somebody were to quit doing it, it may die, okay, because there's nobody there's nobody going to take the Labor. take the reins and, 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 and get it going. And that and that's where this this board comes in. They formalize a lot of the things that happen. And, and they understand that and, and and we got the right folks on it, I think, you know, so they're gonna do a good job. Okay. I think it's important that we do this. Roll call, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Good job on that, Henry. Well, we just got to get the right folks. I need you guys to uh, make that happen. <laughs> get the right people. Okay, too. And all your hard work on the action committees really paid off, Henry. Yeah. We well, well we still got more coming. It ain't done yet. And I know there's lots of other involved in that. Okay, item 21. Discuss an act on declaring an emergency on ordinance number 1044. Make a motion to approve. I second that. Roll call, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Cohn. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Discuss act on employer funding rate for the defined benefit plan OKRS. <coughs> Make a motion to approve. I'll second that. I, I got a question. Is this the same rate we had? This hasn't changed, has it? It has. It went down. Oh, it went down? Yeah, we have been funding 9.31%. Um, <coughs> it went down to 8.52%. And that basically varies based on, on what, they're, what on the fund is doing. On what the fund's doing. But yeah. my recommendation would be is that we leave it as budgeted because of the way the new Gatsby rules fit in. And so I went to the trouble of kind of breaking it out. The employee puts in four and a half percent, and the employer puts in eight point five two. But we have been putting in nine point three one, so point seven nine difference, which is going to be eight thousand six hundred and fifty dollars in overfunding. But we cover a payroll of a million ninety four eight forty one for thirty five employees. And here's where the deal gets into on our new accounting: is the assets of our for our retirement system three million. 238,623. Our liabilities are 3,588,746. And we have a net pension liability left or a shortfall of $350,124. So if we put the 8,650 in there, we will be funding a portion of that pension liability. So you're so recommending that it stay the same as we have budgeted? From a budgetary standpoint, that would be Does it right. have it in there? It doesn't have it listed, but it That's changes it back here on this. That's correct. Yeah. On that. So just okay. we want it to remain what's currently budgeted. Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll uh, reword that. Mayor, Go ahead. We, would, we would just need a motion to leave the report at, or the funding level as is and not make a change. Right, because on the paper in here says reducing it. Right, that this was what was sent to them saying this is what it would be and that we can then so go ahead and it fill it out level. to maintain it at the current level. Maintain at current level. Yeah, so I'll make the motion that we approve this at the current level. I second that. Roll call, please. <coughs> Gunner. Yes. Jack Howe. Yes. Scott. Yes. <coughs> Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number 23. Discuss act on entering into executive session under 25 OS section 307B4 for confidential communication with its, its attorney regarding an investigation or claim pertaining to the city sewer line located in a vacated alley. 307B1 to discuss the employment, hiring, appointment, promotion, demotion, discipline, disciplining, or resignation of the city manager Ted Graham. And under 25 OS 
Section 307B3 pertaining to the purchase of real property. Make a motion to approve. Roll call, please. Junior. Yes. Jeff Cook. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayton. Yes. So are we doing it in the order as listed on here, Lou? We need to swap the last one probably so we can all be back there at the end. That would be fine. Okay. We can we can swap. I'll stay here now, then you can swap. Uh, oh, okay. So which one are we talking about first? Sewer line. The sewer? Discuss an act to reconvene into regular session. I make a motion that we reconvene. A second that motion. Does this number 25 discuss an act on any action to be taken on matters discussed in executive session? Oh, yeah, we might do that. Why? We want to come back in. Yes. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, let's try this again. Number 25, discuss an act on any action to be taken on matters discussed in executive session. I make a motion that we purchase that property discussed for the $20,000 discussed plus half of the survey fees. Second that. Roll call, please. Junior. Yes. Jeff Coe. Abstain. Scott. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Tyson. Yes. Item number 26, discuss an act on city manager's report. Make a motion we accept the city manager's report. Second. Okay. Short. okay. I will send out some stuff that I learned from the city manager's conference. One in particular that I thought was of interest is the city of Yukon. And they do a public private partnership called P3 Financing. And I'll send out some stuff on that and talk about how they're doing that. Um, the most important thing that I thought was is a program that I had never seen before until it was presented by the city of Owasso. And it's called Building Relationships Today for a Stronger Neighborhood of Tomorrow and a Better Community for All. And um, it gets into stuff about how to start things that are similar to a uh, um, HOA or an HSA where you would have a housing or a home or a neighborhood kind of a group and not really pay the dues but how to organize and the reason being is so that you could take in neighborhoods and get back into control and do some things and Owasso has some premier examples that look just like us and I can pass this around but they do an actual program where they actually organize people to come together and do things like signage for a neighborhood new street signs, um, things that they can do to improve those, and then how to organize and be, instead of like a neighborhood watch, it's about a neighborhood improvement and how to make your community <coughs> overall better. Um, it was probably the most enlightening hour that I've been through in a long time, um, probably because it hit close to home, and it's about neighborhoods that are or were in decline and how to bring them out. And uh, I thought that um, it was an eye-opening experience to listen to several other cities talk about how we were all closely related in that. And, uh, um, I thought it was um, in very included, included how they did it. They actually hire a coordinator now and he goes out and tries to organize them and uh, how they turned around existing neighborhoods and then they can show on the value of property values going up. And, uh, that's how they prove their success. And I thought that was the most phenomenal thing that he showed in his report, is how they took things that were 35, 40, 45 years old in a neighborhood and changed their value. And uh, it was a pretty extraordinary deal. And um, they had two programs doing that. And uh, I realized we probably can't pay a coordinator, but I thought maybe we could take some offshoots of what they taught and how to go about maybe talking about implementing what Jody and I face is um, always having to be in an adversarial position. And this is really about trying to get people to do buy-in and have them on a proactive um, position. And I thought that's the best way to get something done. Instead of us having to give you a letter stating we would like you to do something or find you to do something, this would be about what can we do to make this community or this neighborhood better. Um, 
they had a real big tie-in in their community about how to name neighborhoods, and I never thought about it until the guy showed it. Um, I guess, for lack of a better example, since Bill's here, Stubbs Estates. They actually named out on the front entrance a community so they could tell people, I live in this community. So our subdivisions that we see on our block, lot and block maps will have like different subdivisions or different areas, and they took those and went back and renamed and at the top of some of the street signs they actually put up there something like that so if you were the Windsor or if you were the whatever um, they put those on there and then you could tell people so when people were driving down the street you knew you were in that old subdivision and it brought back community it brought back strength and I thought that was hugely valuable and then they showed things where people were taking over and bringing back their yards bringing back their homes um, it was an extraordinary program, and they used hotel motel tax funds just as we've got them set up, so it wasn't nothing unique on how to kind of fund some of it. And uh, the real thing was is he just went out and coordinated and, and compared it to a neighborhood watch program, but instead of being about crime, mostly it was about how to do improvements and how to bring the value and how to bring back community. And they started having barbecues or even little meetings and talking about them. And they did them off of communities that do have HOAs or stuff like that, where they pay a dues or want to be significant and have those things match. And so the deal was about value and how to bring your property back. And ultimately, when it got back to it, was it was going to be on us. Um, what the city of Owasso pointed out was is that every time they turned around, it was, what are you going to do for us? Well, they pointed out that the city is us. So what are you going to do? And that's what their deal is about. They put it right back on the citizens and said, well, since you are us, you're part of the city, what are we going to do? And that property is your property. And then took off, and they've got some real successes up there. So if you're ever in Owasso driving around, you can see some of these that are on the picture. And I didn't realize they had the same problems the city of Henrietta had until I looked at their view. And they, they're almost identical. If you could take Owasso off the picture, you could put us on the picture in some of them. And all they did is went back and tied to that community. And he worked up how they could do those things. And they renamed their communities. They revitalized them. And they got buy-in. And they started having, getting people together and organizing. So they had like monthly or quarterly meetings to talk about their neighborhood specifically, not the city, their neighborhood. What can we do for our neighborhood? And it has really taken off. It's quite a catalyst. And it's saving them a considerable amount of money in code enforcement and all the other issues that they have. And it's really, a, I think, a proactive code enforcement is what it is. Instead of going out and finding somebody, we're going out and telling you how to fix it and how to put it on you. So I'll share that, and I'll try to keep that short. They had another deal in there, and then the financing. Um, overall, thank you for letting me go to the conference. It's something I've been involved in for a long time, and you always get to share. This is the entire packet, if you guys want to read it. Um, and do that. Um, we're working on the splash pad, as you know, and the, the biggest thing up there to realize is, is that we've ran into the biggest rock pile in Henrietta, in my opinion. We're going to have to rent a large jackhammer to expedite digging the water line and the sewer line. Um, if you haven't been up there, I invite you to go up there and look. You can see all the rock. Just one of those things that's unfortunate as far as expediency. We're going to have to do due diligence and work at it. Um, met with Justin Jones, and uh, he's got everybody on page, and I think we're doing the right things. And, um, it's not going to happen as fast as everybody'd like, but um, at the end we'll have a splash pad, a bathroom, a sidewalk, and then when we get done with that, we'll try to really get into setting up for the wheelchair swing, so that nobody forgets that we got to set up and set that up. Do you have any forecast when uh, the splash pad be done? Too? I said the first of August, but I'm going to eat my words and say middle or end of August because. The rock and the hill, and, and it could go faster than I'm thinking. When I, we got the footings poured and um, set up for the bathrooms, we'll have the plumbing and the um, those things are in place. If you haven't been up there, and uh, want to thank Ron for organizing and helping us and putting together, and the Claysons for getting the brick mason to come in, and uh, so it's a community effort, and that uh, we're going to pay some people and we're going to have to do some things. But we got people showing up and wanting to do things, but. It's creeping along, but I think we got temporary power today, or if the rain didn't rain us out again, then um, we'll move into that. And am I far off and say in the middle of August, maybe? 
is a want to commit. <laughs> I, I, I hope if we can work on it. Oh, the it. rain in Iraq is really good. But, right. It, but we're, and I say, I'm trying to be very conservative now. I, I think we can get it by then. I just don't know. Well, the important thing is that it's going to be completed. Right. And so those things are moving forward. An extraordinary year. Yeah. Okay. It continues to rain. And uh, um, we talked about in the capital improvement plan, and I want to bring it. We're going to meet with um, Myers Engineering out of Oklahoma City, but talk about the million gallon water storage, the 750,000 gallon water storage. And in addition to that, talk about how the drying beds and then how we mess, mess with, um, how we expand the residual drying beds for the water plant because they're a crucial part of what we got to do. The plant being more efficient, more effective, produces a more residual. Um, that was probably a byproduct that nobody thought about when we went in through this process, but we're making more of the solids that come out of your water. Nothing to add. Question on that. I've been thinking about that since we've we've really cut back our, our water loss rates, so that we should have to uh, condition less gallons per month now than we used to when we were like losing 30 percent or so. Has that cut back on the amount of uh, residuals? So Probably it's cut back on the extent, but we're still running out of space, and then unfortunately we rely on Mother Nature for drying beds, and it's rained. And, but um, we have some equipment that needs to be refurbished or replaced inside of those sludge basins that sit on the edge of the water plant. Those are probably more of a hindrance than actual storage or actual amount of. And so um, when we address that, and, uh, um, but I think we can get that done. We've met all the standards. We can publish the uh, water bill. Um, we've got the official letter again, finally from DEQ. We have been relinquished from all wastewater Notices of violations is what they're called, or NOVs, and they started all the way back in 2007. So the letter outlines that, and I'll show you a copy of that. Um, it took a while of addressing certain things, and you know they get to add to, and we take away, but we got them all done. The next one to work on is our water, and I think when we resolve some of the issues that were on that original, we'll be able to get out of that consent order. That's a double-edged sword for those of us that like to apply for water board grants or those things. You get more points for being in a consent order than being out of. Um, yeah, I know that sounds odd. Is, you know, when you're doing a really good job, you get not so many points. But I don't want to get into another consent order right away. Um, the guys have finished the parking lot, or I, I think mostly finished the parking lot. And then we're looking at putting the signage together. And when I say the parking lot, it's the very corner of Nichols Park to go into the ATV, UTV park. I'm talking about somewhere around $2,500 and some signage, which includes some signage for Nichols Park. We're trying to improve those entrances, but we wanted to have like an arrow point to there, an entrance sign on the tunnel, uh, caution high water you know, events, making sure people kind of know that. And then I think we're going to have to put some no trespassing or private property on the edges of those so that everybody is clearly understanding that what's park and what's not park. And then after that, I think we'll try to look at how we open it up gradually, if you will, and let people in there. And, um, I think it'll work out. And then on that northeast part of the parking lot, and Ron's not here, but he wants to build an activity center that you see in the evening. Um, we call it Crazy Casey Activity Center. And, uh, but uh, I think it's a good thing. He's talking just about 1.7 acres. And if you go to Old Mulgee, they have a, a similar track or a area they're right behind the Kubota dealership. Um, I don't remember the exact name of the place, but um, that's kind of what we're mimicking. And uh, I think it will be an added value. Um, he talks about his grandsons and his family doing it and how many people are we've been asked. So um, we're looking at doing that. It's pretty inexpensive. It's a, just a, setting out a track. And I know so little about motorcycles and motorcycle tracks, so I'm speaking way out of turn. That's the intent of the project, and I think it'll meet that. And it's just another way to attract people in there. So um, I think overall those things are coming along, and uh, once we the splash pad's kind of on our front burner, and then we need to drop back and do the 75 and Main Street um, bridge cleanup, finish that. We still got some stuff to do on some other projects that we got going, um, and we'll get those lined out. So we'll be driving. <laughs> well, 
It's an extraordinary amount of rain. I can see that. But, um, it's good I'll say that, that there was the extraordinary amount of rain that having that cleaned up around there to clean around those bridges helped tremendously for the citizens, especially yeah. Yeah. Uh, around the creek area, but all over my well, I'd just like to say that Nichols Park has been very well received. I, I drive out there several times a week, and there's always 20 or 30 people out there, and sometimes more. So that's uh, it's taken off. People, more and more people are knowing the lake is being used a lot. It is. Angels out there every day. But it's uh, but it's well for the future. Yeah. The Ryan Rain Walk Across America was a huge hit Friday. There was a ton of people out there. I would guess probably. Well over 200 people. Yeah, it's awesome. They were all over the beach. They were all over the beach house, sitting there. They had a live band out there. They had concessions out there. It was just really nice. Well, it turned great. out really well. And you know, he graduated here in '98, so he had a bunch of classmates that came back for it, and it was, it was very neat. They got a lot of free, free gifts too. Yep, they gave out a lot of free gifts. Those pictures of the like evening sunsetting, and they had the like little streams of lights along the beach house, and yeah, they ran the out to the trees, all the kids lights. playing in the sand. It was just gorgeous. Yeah, it was. It was gorgeous. Good. It was good to see that place coming to life again after what, 30, 40 years. <laughs> it was busy. Bruce was out there taking pictures. It was quite a turnout. Wasn't it really it? was. It looked almost like the Everybody old days. Everybody was happy, good moods. Everything was going great out there. He did a very inspiring speech. It was, it was a lot of fun. Even a five-year-old stayed out there for hours. Is that all you have? Yes, ma'am. Hey, without talking about the results, because we don't know the results, you were in arbitration on the win case also. You might want to let them know that. Um, yeah, we did three days of arbitration. In case it's an um, ongoing um, legal matter with the construction company and the design company of both the water plant, uh, lake inlet, river inlet, and the filtration building. And um, uh, we won't know the results until the middle of August because it's a singular arbitrator. Um, the rules of evidence, I guess, is what they called it, was submitted on July the 15th, and he has a deadline. And I think it's middle of August sometime, and I think he'll rule before that, actually, but, um, um, so I have no clue of what he'll do. We just were, had, it was basically, there was evidence and things presented from both sides of that, and um, it was three days, and, and Mr. Casey probably received the brunt of the questions because of his experience of being there on site at the plant, and uh, those things like that. Well, will that bring this thing to an end? No, the arbitrator? There will still be, there, there's two defendants, there's Wynn Construction and the Melberger Brawley. The Melberger Brawley side of it will go through regular litigation after this is over. So, um, I felt that the city's presentation, I thought Mr. Williams and Mr. Nolan did an excellent job. And, I don't know how to really judge those, but I, I felt good about what we presented. One way there with a positive feeling. So it's an unfortunate circumstance in reality because it's a lot of money, time, and effort. And for you all that have lived it, it's been since 2008. And, uh, and hopefully we can bring some of that to a fruition at some point. But I, I think overall it's headed in the right direction. Hey, Paul, please. business for the city but we had talked at the previous meeting about the youth force with the United Methodist Church they're going to be the the kids will be arriving approximately 80 kids and and, and uh, adult staff from all over the state uh, next Sunday at the Methodist Church and be here for a week doing projects around town so just to let you all know that that's <coughs> going to see a lot of different buses and different things going on they have different programs different things set up for through the day that's great Item number 28, adjourn. Make a motion, we adjourn. Second. Hold, please.
July 21st, 2015, 6.30 p.m. Civic Center, 115 South 4th Street. Roll call, please. Gunner. Here. Jeff Cove. Here. Scott. Here. Kelzer. Here. Clayson. Here. Item number one, discuss act on approval of consent agenda. A, financial reports for June 2015. B, minutes of meeting held in June 2015. C, claims for the month of June 2015. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Hold, please. Gunner. Yes. Jeff Coat. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Lightson. Yes. Item number two, discuss act on approval of payments of invoices number 5536504 to Department of Environmental Quality in the amount of $7,105 for annual public water supply. Make a motion we approve that $7,105 to the Department of Environmental Quality. I second that. Please. Yes. Jeff Coe. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number three. Discuss act on approval of payment of invoice number 5502-8106 to Department of Environmental Quality in the amount of $7,528.38 for the annual non-industrial discharge permit for wastewater treatment plant. Any motion to approve? I'll second that. Hold, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Coat. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number four, discuss an act on approval of purchase of ferric chloride, 40% from Brintag in the amount of $7,147.65 for the water treatment plant. Thank you, motion we approve it. Second. Hold, please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Coat. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer? Yes. Clayson? Yes. Item number five, discuss an act on approval of purchase of caustic soda, 30% from Brentag in the amount of $7,716.10 for the water treatment plant. A motion to approve? I second it. Hold, please. Goodner? Yes. Jeff Cook? Yes. Scott? Yes. Kelzer? Yes. Clayson? Yes. Item number six, discuss an act on approval of purchase of caustic soda, 30% from Brentag in the amount of $8,000 for the water treatment plant. Take a motion to approve. A second. Hold, please. Goodner? Yes. Jeff Coe? Yes. Scott? Yes. Kelzer? Yes. Clayton? <clears throat> yes. Item number seven. Discuss act on approval of purchase of ferric chloride from Brentag in the amount of $7,500 for the water treatment plant. Make a motion to approve it. Second. Hold, please. Goodner? Yes. Jeff Cut? Yes. Scott? Yes. Kelzer? Yes. Clayson? Yes. Item number eight. Discuss an act on approval of payment to Center Point Landfill in the amount of $8,000. Make a motion to approve. Second. Hold, please. Gunner. Yes. Jeff Cut. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number nine. Discuss an act on approval of payments to OWRB 09-0029-CW in the amount of $11,193.26 for the monthly payment. Make a motion to approve. I second it. Hold, please. Gunner. Yes. Jeff Cut. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Item number 10, discuss and act on new business. <coughs> no new business. Item number 11, adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second that. Full please. Goodner. Yes. Jeff Cut. Yes. Scott. Yes. Kelzer. Yes. Clayson. Yes. Okay, that was four minutes. <laughs> Four minutes for that second. <laughs> we need to have a lesson in the economy. Are you the one putting that right?
they just want yeah, to right. do that. They feel that some things are still working. Right. It doesn't have to be all 